Asteroid Bennu was the target of the OSIRIS-REx mission which intends on returning a sample from the surface to Earth in 2023. Back in December 2018, it arrived at Bennu, after a two and a half year journey. It was placed into an orbit and started mapping the surface in detail. In October 2020, it successfully touched down on the surface and collected a sample. During the mission there have been many strange discoveries and based on the two years of data, scientists have recently had to conclude that the asteroid is probably hollow. Let's dive into the bizarre findings in a little more detail. When NASA decided to send a probe to land on an asteroid and bring back a sample, they selected Bennu because from the images they had of it, it is thought to have a very smooth surface, which would be ideal for landing on. Once OSIRIS-REx had made the 200 million mile journey, the first images it beamed back revealed a landscape that was not flat and smooth, but instead was littered with boulders and rock fields. After much consideration, they decided on a landing site and went ahead with a mission to land and scoop up material. This revealed another mystery, as the probe touched down, it turned out that the surface of the asteroid was incredibly soft, crumbling under the probe as it touched the surface. The probe then sent a blast of nitrogen to dislodge the surrounding rock in order to scoop it up in the sample collection tool. Once more, scientists were caught off guard when the maneuver turned out to have yielded so much material that the dust and rock were stopping the sample collection tool from closing, allowing much of the material to leak into space. They eventually managed to seal the container, but yet more surprises were in store for them. Recently, the University of Colorado researchers concluded based on data the probe had collected in the two years it had been circling Bennu that the asteroid is probably hollow. They also observed that Bennu was flinging marble-sized rocks away from the surface. These would then enter into orbit and some would eventually fall back to the surface. By tracking the motions of these rocks, they were able to make calculations about the strength of Bennu's gravity and thereby determine how the material is distributed throughout the inside of the asteroid. They discovered that the material seems not to be evenly distributed and that there appeared to be a vast void in the center. They suspect that the material is being pushed outwards by the spin towards the surface. The bulging equator may be the thinnest part of the asteroid. Another mystery relates to its spin. They discovered that the spin rate during their observations was actually increasing rather than slowing down. So what could this all mean? Wal Thornhill had previously discussed some of the aspects of Bennu and pointed out that the sudden ejection of material from the surface may be due to the electrical nature of the object. As it approaches the sun, it would start to enter a higher charged area and could cause discharge on the surface which could eject material. The material then enters into an orbit around Bennu, and some may become neutralized, causing it to fall back to the surface. One other side effect that may occur is that this increased potential may also cause the object to start spinning faster. And during the period that they were observing, it was indeed moving closer and closer to the sun. So how would the formation of this asteroid be different in the EU model? In the EU model, the material to form this asteroid can only have come from the catastrophic interaction of planets. For example, Mars, where large chunks of the surface may have been etched off and hurled into space. This material would then rearrange itself into a series of layers of different charges, similar to double layers. As we discussed when we examined the spherical double layers, these themselves have a tension that holds them together. Now another aspect to consider which Jim kindly pointed out to me is that if this is indeed made of layers of slightly differently charged materials which spin, then each layer will have some unique properties that we are not really taking into account. Each layer would contain a layer of positive charge and then a layer of negative charge, or possibly the other way around. At the poles these layers are almost stationary, with random motions cancelling each other out but as we move to the equator and assuming that the object is spinning, these layers will start to take on the properties of a current. Now, the random motions are far smaller compared to the rotation around the equator. 
Normally, two current carrying wires will attract each other, but here we have two layers with opposite charge, so the net effect is a repulsion at the equator. This means that we should indeed find a bulge near the equator, and it also means that this should contain the least amount of material, meaning it may not necessarily be inertia that is causing the bulge, and this concept may also be something that we need to consider at many different scales. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.